50 intermediate phrases are going to help you to improve your English speaking and your comprehension. So let's get started. The first phrases are all about giving advice. So you could say, it might be a good idea to turn the oven off. Or it might be a good idea to use a pencil instead of a pen, just in case you make a mistake. This sounds really quite polite and it's telling somebody what you would do, which brings me on to the next phrase. If I were you, I would, if I were you, I would turn the oven off. If I were you, I would use a pencil instead of a pen, just in case you make a mistake. <laughs> okay, so that's two phrases you can use to give advice. It might be a good idea to, or if I were you, I would. Now the next two phrases are all about asking for attention. You could use these in the office or at home. You could say, um, can you spare a moment? Are you free? Can you spare a moment? Or you could say, could you cast your eye over this for me? That second phrase is all about asking someone to check your work for any mistakes, just to make sure it reads well, perhaps. Sometimes if I'm sending an important email or writing a post, that I'm not sure about, I might ask someone to cast their eye over it for me. So could you cast your eyes over this for me, please? All right, the next ones are asking for opinions. So you might say, where do you stand on? Or you could say, what would you say if I told you? So let's say we're talking about politics, I might say, where do you stand on the Trump administration? So I'm just asking, what's your general opinion about the Trump administration? Or what would you say if I told you that the UK were going to leave the EU? So I'm asking about your opinion on something. Of course, the second one is probably going to be used with something that's not widely known or something you are considering. So I might say to you, what would you say if I told you I was going to quit YouTube? If that was something I was considering, of course I'm not. Um, so don't worry. So those are asking for opinions. Now the next phrases are giving approval or encouragement. So you might say to someone, yes, you're on the right lines. You're on the right lines. That means you're going in the right direction. Maybe you need a little bit of help, but you're on the right lines, you're going in the right direction, you have the right thoughts about something, you have the right idea. You're on the right lines. Or you might say, oh, give it your best shot. That means you can do it, just try your best. Give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. Now I would like to just take a moment to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Lingoda, who despite the current global uncertainty, have continued to support this channel, for which I am incredibly grateful for. And perhaps now would be a good time for you to consider leveling up your language skills with one of Lingoda's courses, offering group and private lessons in English, business English, French, German and Spanish, and all available at CEFR levels from A1 up to C2, You'll be able to advance your language skills no matter what level you are currently at. Now the lessons are fully structured with additional downloadable course materials for you to use for revision. And when you have completed a level, then you'll receive a CEFR certificate, which you can use in a job or university application. Now personally, I've always enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed my lessons with Lingoda mainly because, well, the teachers are fantastic, but also because of the lesson structure. I found that really helped me to learn a lot during my lessons. But don't just take my word for it. You can try it for yourself with a free seven day trial. All you have to do is click on that link below and check it out for yourself. Okay, back to today's useful phrases. So the next one is talking about things with optimism. 
So if you're optimistic about something, you could say, you never know, it might. So for example, if someone is depressed that something isn't happening, you might say, you never know, it might happen. Or you could change it to, you never know, you might win. So perhaps you are debating whether or not you should play the lottery and I say, mm, yeah, you could do, you never know, you might win. Or you could change it to I, you never know, I might have a surprise for you. Oh, oh, you never know. I might come back from my shopping trip with a little treat for you. You never know, I might. <laughs> okay, the next optimistic phrase is to look on the bright side. So particularly at the moment when things aren't so good in the, in the world with everything that's going on, you might th say to someone, don't be down, look on the bright side. We have more time to spend with our families. Um, people are taking hand hygiene a lot more seriously. Um, we're working together globally to solve a global problem, which might lead to um, better information sharing between our nations in the future. So to look on the bright side is to find the positive in a negative situation. And that's very similar to the next phrase, which is every cloud has a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver lining. The cloud represents the negative situation and the little silver lining around it is obviously the sun behind the cloud. So there is a little silver lining around that cloud, meaning there is sun behind there somewhere. There's sunshine, positivity. So you might hear someone referring purely to the silver lining. So they're taking that phrase and cutting it down a little and they might say, well, there is one silver lining. I, I get to spend a lot of time with my partner because he can't work in the office, he has to work from home. Okay, so three phrases for you there, all on the subject of optimism. Now, if we're going to be blocking somebody, perhaps they're asking you questions that you just don't want to answer, maybe they're too personal or too intrusive, you could say to them, mind your own business, mind your own business. I was told this a lot when I was a child. I was very nosy as a child, very inquisitive. I was always asking questions. And the grown-ups would constantly say to me, mind your own business. Or never you mind is another bonus one there. Never you mind. Mind your own business. Okay, it means look after your own business. Don't worry about my business. So mind your own business, okay? The next phrase, along the same lines is, I'm not at liberty to say. This is very formal and something I would expect um, the representative of a company to say. If someone is making a speech about a company's decisions or plan of action, and then someone asks a question that they can't answer because they're not allowed to, then they might say, I'm not at liberty to say. So this is definitely more formal. Okay, moving on. If you are disagreeing with somebody, then you might say to them, never in a million years. So let's put it into context. If I ask you, um, if I ask you to do something that you really don't want to do and won't ever do. So if I say to you, um, would you ever consider speaking to your dad who you fell out with five years ago, would you ever consider reconnecting, reaching out to him, making amends? I might say, never in a million years. It means absolutely not, never in a million years. Similar to that is the phrase, over my dead body. Now these are very informal phrases. Um, especially over my dead body, you wouldn't use this in a formal situation. And it means that absolutely will not happen. I will have to die first and you'll have to step over my dead body for that to happen. So um, if I say to you, um, can I, um, it, one day I might come and live with you, <laughs> I'd say over my dead body, you're not living with me, my house is far too small. <laughs> That's a terrible example but I hope you get the point. Or you might just say, in your dreams, in your dreams, that might be something you dream, but it's not gonna happen. It will only happen in your dreams, not in real life. 
So someone might say, uh, hey, I want to take you out for a drink. Let's go and have, let's go and have dinner sometime. And I might say, in your dreams, in your dreams, not in real life. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so next is about cheering somebody up. So if someone's feeling quite down, you might say to them, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Which actually, when thinking about it, you're, you're belittling their problem. If they're upset about something, you're saying, come on, it's not that bad. It's not like the end of the world. But it is meant to be a bit more comforting than that. So you say, well, it's not the end of the world. It'll be okay. You could tell someone simply to lighten up if they are um, being too serious or being too negative, then you might say, come on, lighten up, it'll be fine, lighten up. But lighten up can also be seen as a little bit abrasive, a bit um, offensive, I guess. If someone tells you to lighten up, then, they, <laughs> then they're saying, you're being too serious, lighten up, come on. So sometimes it can feel like they're not very um, caring about your woes, okay? Um, another thing you can say is, and this is very comforting, time is a great healer. So we talk about things being very painful um, when we're experiencing emotion, but um, that pain, that hurt can heal with time. And so we talk about time being a great healer if someone is really upset. If I give it time, time's a great healer, you will feel better in time. And if someone is particularly upset because of the loss of a love in their life, so I'm talking about a relationship breaking down, maybe they've been dumped, or maybe their partner has run off with somebody else, then you could say to them, there are plenty more fish in the sea. And this means there are other people, other nice people that they will one day be very happy with. Okay, let's move on. So you could ask about someone's progress with a project. You could say, how are you getting on? How are you getting on? So I'm just asking, how is the project going? How are you getting on? Oh, it's all going well, thank you. And you could say, how's it going? How's it going? Now, how's it going could also mean, how are you? If you just bump into someone, hey, how's it going? That could mean, how are you? But if they're working on something, and that you previously discussed, and you go away and you come back, you might say, how's it going? While they're working on it, and that would mean, how is the project progressing? Or how is your work going? How's it going? I'll say, oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going quite slowly actually. Stop disturbing me, go away. Okay, the next phrases are all about asking for approval. So you might say to someone, would you mind if, or, do you think anyone would mind if this happens? Let's say that you want to play your music to practice a dance routine. So you want to play your music loud to practice your dance routine in a public area. So you might go up to someone and say, would you mind if I play my music to pra practice my dance? Or do you think anyone would mind if I play my music to practice my dance? And that way you're just politely saying, is it okay for me to play music here in this area? Will it disturb you? Would you mind if? Or do you think anyone would mind if? Okay, you could also say, do you reckon I ought to? And this is, uh, it's not so much asking for approval actually, more asking for advice. So maybe I've labeled this one wrong, but you're asking someone if, it, if you should do something. So do you think, do you reckon means, do you think? Do you reckon I ought to say sorry to my partner for being rude earlier? Do you reckon I ought to say sorry or not? Should I let him come to me or should I go to him? Do you reckon I ought to go to him first? So it's kind of more asking for their advice rather than their approval. Yeah, I've, I've mislabeled that one, Never mind. Okay, so the next one is asking for information. Um, you could say, I don't suppose you know what time the train arrives, do you? So we're making it here a question tag. I don't suppose you know how to get to the library, do you? 
I don't suppose you know if there's anything to do with a toddler in this area, do you? Okay, or you could also say, you don't happen to know this thing, do you? You don't happen to know what time the train arrives, do you? Or you don't happen to know if there's anything interesting to do in this area, do you? Okay. Um, so the next one is all about delaying. So if someone's asked you to do something, you might say, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. I'm a bit tied up at the moment. It means I'm busy doing other things. So you're tired, it's like you're physically tied up, but, but because you're busy doing other things. I'm a bit tied up at the moment. Ask me later. Or you could say, give me a chance. Or you can take the A away and just say, give me chance. Give me a chance. So imagine you just walked in the door, you've had a busy day shopping, you've got groceries and all sorts of supplies, and you've got loads of heavy shopping bags, you've got to get in and make lunch for the family and you've got so much to do and you're feeling all sweaty and flustered and as soon as you walk in the door, someone's like, um, can, you, can you just take a phone call and tell the um, gas man all about the problem with the boiler? And I'd be like, give me a chance, I've just walked in. I've got to make lunch, I've got to put the shopping away, give me a chance. <laughs> okay, you could also say, I'm up to my neck in it, or I'm up to my neck in work, or I'm up to my neck in bills, um, or I'm up to my neck in debt. So to be up to your neck in it means you have so much of it. Yeah, so I'm up to my neck in work. This is something I might say to people who um, write to me and ask me, for help, I, I get a lot of emails from students asking me for help with their, um, with their English language struggles. And I might say to them, I'd love to help you, but I'm up to my neck in work at the moment. I've got my hands full, which is another one we could use. I've got my hands full at the moment with my son and my work and everything else that I have to do, okay? So those are some really common and useful phrases to remember. I've got my hands full. I'm up to my neck in it, give me a chance. Okay, so when something goes wrong, these phrases are what you might use if you're showing dismay. So if something goes wrong, someone's done something that you don't agree with, then you might use these phrases. What on earth did you do that for? What on earth did you do that for? It's basically saying, why did you do that? But showing that you're really unhappy about it. What on earth did you do that for? You could just say to them, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> Perhaps someone comes out of their house wearing um, something really inappropriate for the weather or for the, the event that they're attending. You could just look at them and say, what were you thinking when you got dressed this morning? <laughs> Why are you wearing that? You could also say, if someone says something bad, you could say, you've put your foot in it now, or simply, you've put your foot in it. Or I could say, I've put my foot in it. I've just put my foot in it. So it's to say something that creates problems, it means that you've put your foot in it. Um, you could also tell somebody that that was uncalled for. If someone does something that you think is bad and unnecessary, then you could say that was uncalled for. It means that wasn't fair, that wasn't needed. Perhaps I um, say something quite horrible to somebody in the middle of an argument, something that's really personal and upsetting to them and they burst into tears and walk out of the room. And someone should turn to me and say that was uncalled for, that wasn't nice, that was unfair, that was uncalled for. Sorry. Okay, the next phrases are about being lucky. You might say to someone, oh, thank you lucky stars, that something didn't happen. So you could say, oh, thank you lucky stars that it didn't rain today because you forgot your umbrella, you didn't bring a coat. So thank you lucky stars that it didn't rain. Yeah. The next one is, um, that was close. Or you could say, that was a close call. If if you narrowly avoided disaster, then you'd use this phrase, that was close. So imagine something very physical like you're about to step out onto the road and then someone grabs you and pulls you back because a bus 
drives past very fast and you nearly stepped out in front of the bus, then you would go, oh, that was close. Or that was a close call. So you narrowly avoided disaster. Like arriving just on time for a lesson or just on time to get onto a train that's about to leave and you have to be on that particular train. So you'd say, oh, that was a close call. We nearly missed it. It was nearly a disaster. You could say to someone, it's just as well that something did happen. It's just as well that, or that something didn't happen. It's just as well that your mother didn't come today because actually we've just had a burst pipe and there's a water leak in the house and the house is a mess and we have no heating now. So it's just as well that. So it means it's good that something did or didn't happen. It's just as well that you uh, were at home when the lockdown was started. It's just as well that you were at home when the lockdown started. It's just as well that you didn't book a holiday before the pandemic. Yeah, so it's saying it's good that something did or didn't happen. You could also just say, fortunately for you, this didn't happen, or fortunately for you, this did happen. You could change it also to fortunately for us, fortunately for me, fortunately for him, depending on who is the fortunate one. So I'd say, fortunately for me, um, I'm able to continue working at home. Fortunately for my son, he has his mum and dad at home. So it means that that person is fortunate. Okay, the next phrases are all about being relieved. It's about relief. Ah, oh, phew. That must be a weight off your mind. That must be a weight off your mind. So if someone's talking about a problem being resolved, then you would say to them, oh, that must be a weight off your mind, saying that must relieve you from that pressure, that worry that you were carrying. You could say it about yourself. It was, it's a huge weight off my mind. It means that I'm no longer worrying about that particular thing. It's a weight off my mind. Some people talk about weight on their shoulders in, in the same way. It must be a big weight off your shoulders or a weight off your back even. That's a big weight off my back. So any idea, any thought of carrying the weight of worry. So weight on your mind, weight on your shoulders, weight on your back, okay? You could also say, oh, that's one less thing to worry about, yeah? Maybe if you um, are organizing a trip and you are told that someone else is going to take care of the catering or someone else will take care of the travel organizing, then you can say, oh, well, that's one less thing for me to worry about. Or it's one less thing for us to worry about. Or you could simply use the phrase, thank God for that. Thank God for that. But if you feel uncomfortable using the word God, you could say, thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. Okay, the next phrases are all about saying sorry. Now, of course, you can just say, I'm sorry, but there are other ways to say it too. You could say, please excuse my ignorance. I didn't realize that. So this is something you'd say if you have said something that's incorrect to somebody who is now um, offended by your ignorance. Perhaps we're talking about culture or, um, people from different countries and you make an assumption about somebody from another country and say, oh, everyone from this country does this or everyone from that country likes this. You make a statement that's false and actually a little bit insensitive and that person then corrects you and you'd go, oh, please excuse my ignorance. I didn't realize, please excuse my ignorance. I didn't realize. So that is how you would apologize in a nice way. You could also say, I'm sorry, how thoughtless of me. How thoughtless of me. Like this morning, I made myself a cup of tea and I didn't make my partner a cup of tea. And when he came down, he's like, hey, where's my cup of tea? And I, oh, how, I'm sorry, how thoughtless of me. I, I didn't even think. So I was thoughtless at that moment. I didn't think, I'm sorry. All right, the next phrases are all about waiting. We all have to wait sometimes, whether it's 
for the bus or for a letter to arrive or for your food to cook in the oven. But you might say, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Now this can be used in two ways. You can either use it to um, tell someone that we just won't know until time passes. So if they say, um, mummy, when, when will we go back to school? And at the moment that's uncertain. So I might say, oh, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know yet, time will tell. <laughs> that's another one, time will tell. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But have to wait and see can also be used if you know something, but you're making someone else wait to know the answer. For example, if you've bought someone a present for Christmas and they're really impatient and they're asking you, did you buy me a bike for Christmas? Did you buy me a bike for Christmas? Did you? Did you buy me a bike? Did you buy me a bike? You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see, okay? You could also use the phrase, time waits for no man. Time waits for no man. And this just basically means that time will continue to tick and no one can stop time. Not one person. Time waits for no man. You could say, um, I can't wait for something to happen. Now this is actually a positive thing in most cases. Um, usually it's used if you're very excited about something. I can't wait until my birthday or I can't wait for the weekend because this is happening. Yeah, so I can't wait is usually used in a positive way um, unless you're perhaps deciding to do something drastic and someone says, no, don't do that. I can't wait, I have to do it. Yeah, but usually it's used in a positive situation. Um, you might say, um, I keep putting something off. So often we have things in our life that we don't want to do, whether it's chores around the house or dealing with bills or doing our tax returns or something. There's something usually that we don't want to do. And so we might put it off. To put something off in this context means to delay it. And so you might say to someone, I have to do this today. I keep putting it off, but it needs to happen today. Otherwise I will get into trouble. If I don't do my taxes now, the government will, will find me and tell me off. So I keep putting it off. I must do it. You'll also be um, aware that people use the phrase sooner or later quite often, sooner or later. And it just means that at some point, something's going to happen. We don't know when, it might happen soon, it might happen later, but either way, it is going to happen. Sooner or later, you'll, you'll need to eat. Sooner or later, you'll need to sleep. Sooner or later, everything will go back to normal. Okay? All right, so the next phrases are all about being worried. So you can just say, I'm stressed, I'm worried, I'm concerned. But there are a couple of phrases that are a little bit more advanced. And the first one is, I'm beside myself. And this means you're very worried. I'm beside myself. It's almost like your soul is not in your body and it's next to you because it's so worried. I'm beside myself with worry. I'm beside myself. Um, this, I would hold this back for very, very serious situations, perhaps if your pet dog goes missing and you're really worried. Okay, so I'm beside myself means that you're incredibly worried about something. You could also say, um, if you're stressed about something that's coming up that hasn't happened yet, you could say, I'm dreading it or I'm absolutely dreading it. Perhaps it's an exam that you are not very confident about or maybe you have to go to have a procedure um, a medical procedure and you're worried about the pain or the recovery process. Perhaps you have to go and fire somebody and you know it's going to be an awful experience. You'd say, I'm dreading it. I'm absolutely dreading it. I'm really not looking forward to it. It's going to be awful. <laughs> and on that very negative note, I can't believe I ended with that one. That's the end of, of this particular lesson. Those are your 50 useful intermediate phrases. 
If you have any questions about any of those, then please do put it in the comment section below. If you're not already a subscriber, then please do click subscribe and the bell notification so you know when I release a new video or go live. <laughs> now, if you do have a few spare moments, then you could check out one of these lessons. And I would highly recommend, once again, the Lingoda language courses. You've got nothing to lose for taking a free seven day trial. If nothing else, you get a couple of free lessons. All right, until next time guys, take care.